As mentioned earlier, the United States captured the Mariana Islands in 1944. The United States would use the new B-29s, which had a long range to bomb Japan cities to try to get them out of the war. However, due to the long distance, there was concern that some pilots might have engine problems or perhaps while they're over Japan, they might be shot at and have to make an emergency landing. So before an invasion of Japan could happen, the United States wanted to take the two main islands just south of Japan, Okinawa as well as Iwo Jima. These would be used as possible landing areas in case any of our pilots have a problem on their way back from Japan to Guam. Iwo Jima was one of the volcano islands shaped like a pear about 650 miles southeast of Tokyo. At the southern end of the island was an extinct volcano, Mount Suribachi. The whole island stunk of sulfur. The Japanese used the hard volcanic rock and caves lined with steel for superb defensive positions. The Navy and Air Force conducted 72 days of continuous airstrikes and naval bombardment before the invasion on February 19, 1945. Eventually, 60,000 Marines, along with 800 naval warships, attacked the island. It had been expected for the United States to capture Iwo Jima in 14 days, but it took 36. A third of the Marine force were casualties, almost 6,000 killed and over 17,000 wounded. It is key to remember that in February of 1945, the Big Three were meeting at the Yalta Conference, and remember part of that Yalta Conference, due to the Japanese fighting till their death, the Americans had wanted the Soviet Union to declare war with Japan once the conflict with Germany was over. Here is a map of Iwo Jima. Notice at the southeastern end of the island, this is Mount Suribachi. The Japanese had a defensive line behind there, and they were built into the walls of the volcano with caves. The Marines would pound these caves with artillery as well as tanks to no avail. They would then start using flamethrowers to destroy the caves and force the Japanese out. Following Iwo Jima, the Navy and Army attacked Okinawa, which was larger than Iwo Jima. Okinawa is 60 miles long and 340 miles from Japan. It is the central island of the Ryukus. This would be the most costly American operation in the Pacific War, and on a scale similar to the Normandy invasion, the United States committed over 500,000 troops and 1,213 warships. Here you can see the American landing places in blue, as well as the Japanese defensive areas in red. The British Pacific Fleet also played a role in the capture of Okinawa. The actual invasion started in April of 1945. It was assaulted first by four army divisions. Eventually, 170,000 servicemen took part in the island's capture. The Japanese had 77,000 troops and another 20,000 formed a militia. The Japanese allowed the Americans to land unmolested and then attacked as they moved inland. Six days after the landings, the Japanese started to launch kamikaze suicide attacks. These Japanese Zeros were only given enough fuel for a one-way flight designed to attack the enemy ships. They were loaded with a thousand pounds of dynamite and would try to attack first the big aircraft carriers or go into the sides of the heavy cruisers, landing crafts, or battleships. By June 22nd, Okinawa was secured. Only 7,400 Japanese survived. On the American side, 36 warships and landing craft were sunk, and another 368 damaged. More than 4,900 naval personnel were killed, and another 4,800 wounded. The Marines and Army infantry suffered 7,613 killed, and over 31,000 wounded, and another 763 aircraft lost. So if the Japanese were fighting to their death, and again using kamikaze pilots in Okinawa, what would happen when the Americans would try to land on the four main Japanese islands. There would be potentially thousand more aircraft designed to attack our American vessels. One of the saddest and most embarrassing features of 
the war in the Pacific was the naval incident with the USS Indianapolis. The Indianapolis was a heavy cruiser hit by kamikazes in March of 1945 and sent to San Francisco to be repaired. It was loaded with bomb structure for the atomic bomb and sent to Tinian. It then went to the island of Guam. On July 29, 1945, it is tracked by a Japanese sub. The sub sinks it at 15 minutes after midnight on July 30th. The Indianapolis sinks within 12 minutes. Out of a crew of 1,199, 900 go in the water. However, they were discovered after 82 hours and the men were subjected to massive shark attacks. Only 316 of those 900 survived. The Navy was very embarrassed because they knew that this ship was sunk but they should have sent out people searching for these naval personnel much sooner. Now that the Americans had these air bases in Guam and Tinian they started to use the heavy bombers against the main Japanese islands. They fashioned them as the British incendiary raids from Europe. Again a first wave would go in and drop conventional bombs to shatter windows and then a second wave would drop the incendiary bombs this would create a tornado of fire, and many of the Japanese buildings were made with reinforced cardboard. Their factories were not centralized. They were spread out throughout the city. Therefore, we bombed these cities, and it would cause massive civilian casualties. For example, on March 8th, a Tokyo firestorm killed 83,000 people. Our Air Force went from one city to another. Hundreds of thousands were killed, millions homeless. Japan could not get raw materials due to the lack of ships. The majority of its army was in China and could not get home. People in Japan faced epidemics and starvation. So while most Americans understand the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the atomic bomb, however, many hundreds of thousands died from conventional and incendiary bombs. One of the reasons the United States would decide to drop the atomic bomb on Japan was to end the war earlier. However, we did not gain that knowledge that the bomb would work until July of 1945. Prior to that, we had planned on invading Japan. And due to the heavy casualties from Iwo Jima and Okinawa, it was estimated that the landing of American troops in Japan would result in hundreds of thousands of American casualties as well as million more Japanese dying from direct fighting or from starvation and disease. The American military plan for Operation Olympic which was the invasion of the southern island of Kyushu and Coronut the main island of Honshu. The army and navy plan for a November invasion of the southern third of Kyushu since the U.S. suffered a 35% casualty rate in Okinawa, the planners believed that the same ratio would exist for Japan. 767,000 men were supposed to participate, so that would mean 268,000 dead or wounded. The kamikaze attacks in Okinawa heightened the Japanese will to fight. They had husbanded thousands of planes in the home islands and thought that they could destroy the invasion fleet before it landed on the main islands. Kyushu was mountainous and would allow the Japanese supreme defensive advantages. Once again, it was believed that the Japanese would fight to their death. In addition to the kamikaze planes, millions of Japanese would perish due to the fighting, disease, and starvation. So Operation Olympic was for the invasion of the southern island of Kyushu, and then Coronet was for the main island of Honshu. However, the main decision to drop the bomb on Hiroshima was to end the war sooner so that we would not suffer the serious casualties of Olympic and Coronet.